Emmett Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Tanvir Singh, who's going to talk about sign-off compatible netless CDC. Tanvir, we've been used to RTL clock domain crossing. Uh, that's been used for years. Why are we heading now into netless CDC? So uh, you have to understand that in the last few years, things have changed quite a bit. First and foremost, the technology library is shrinking. That means we are now actually putting in a lot more of logic in the same wafer size. So when we are putting circuits closer and closer together, the margin of error is reduced greatly. Secondly, there's a lot of competition in the market and everybody wants to have their chip to be the fastest, to the lowest power and the best in the market. So they are not letting go of any chances to optimize their chips. So Synthesis engines now give you things like ultra compilation, they give you self-gating, replication, retiming, which are very powerful tools to optimize your chips. However, there are also ways in which you can shoot yourself in the foot. And this is getting worse as we move down to 7 nanometers, 5 nanometers, 3 nanometers, and also some of the AI chips where you're really packing some of these, uh, uh, a lot of different processors together, right? Of course, of course. Uh, the more logic you have talking to each other, the more clock domains start interacting with each other. You have 1,000 plus clock domains in a single chip. You have chips as big as 5 billion gates, 10 billion gates. With so much logic talking to each other and so many things coming in by, by the way of hand instantiated data paths. For example, if today you are a processor maker who wants to make a very high speed 5 gigahertz AI processor, of course you will do a lot of your design in RTL, but at the same time you will take a certain data path, certain critical data paths and pipelines which you will hand instantiate using custom macros given by your technology vendor. So all that is hand instantiated logic which is not even existing in RTL. When did you verify that? You never verified that when did RTL CDC. And then add with that all the optimizations you're pulling in, you don't know what has changed in your necklace that could make your chip go bad due to CDC issues. So it's very, very important. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So Tanvir, what are we looking at here? So we are looking at a few of the common synthesis optimizations. Let's start with the clock to rebalancing, uh, which people often do in the RTL stages also, but a lot of it gets done very late in the necklace stage when you are struggling to meet your timing. So you add in more clock gating checks, you add in more strobe signals as the same clock moves through multiple blocks. So you effectively rebalance your clock tree. And while rebalancing, it's not unusual that you realize you need to create more clocks, you need to create more clock domains. Uh, maybe synchronize data handoff between two clock domains using a new synchronizer, which you put in a netlist. Of course, if you have time, you can go back to the RTL, put all the structures in the RTL also. But time is one thing you are out of when you are in the PNR stage. Then we are also looking at stuff like retiming, logic gets moved around, something you deemed as safe in RTL because there was no combinational logic, now may not be safe because there is combinational logic. And the person who's doing the synthesis may not be fully CDC aware and what was done in CDC. They are backend guys, their aim is for logic optimization. They don't really look at the CDC angle in that much detail. Then you are looking at stuff like self gating which is can introduce glitches and also data coherency issues if not done properly. And this is your MUX breakdown into AND or GATE, something people used to traditionally worry about, but it's still an issue if your MUXs break down. And this has gotten a lot more complicated as we start getting more power domains in here, as we get more processors doing different functions on a chip, right? Of course, uh, if you look at current chips, I mean, which are being taped out, we have 1,000 plus clock domains, not unusual. 50,000 plus clock gating checks. I have personally seen chips with over 100,000 clock gating checks on the asynchronous clock domains. Then you have about 5 billion gates, 6 billion gates. They're getting very common in many chips. And hand instantiated data paths we discussed earlier, the logic which does not even exist in the RTL. And then ECOs and all these ultra compilations. So this much complexity due to the increasing size of the design, the increasing complexity of the library, how closely the circuits are packed up together. And when you combine all these features, there are so many points of failures of your CDC verification in the netlist that if you're leaving netlist CDC verification to chance, just relying on your methodology and just relying on your RTL, you're setting yourself up for failure. 
How much is this interlaced with things like uh, noise that comes into the chip? Do they potentially disrupt the clocks and also the uh, how the chip functions along the way? And can you catch that with this? So those CDC tools directly do not catch noise issues and crosstalk issues. That's more than SDA. CDC tools give you the presence of all the structures like synchronizations, etc., inside the chip so that you know what to look for in STA. For example, you have a synchronizer, you know what kind of MTBF numbers you require, what type of cell you require, whether 3 depth, 4 depth, or 5 depth, or whether you have the right set max delay, and whether you are using a multi-cycle path to have data hold. So all these things, CDC tools can guide the STA tools to actually check what to check. There are things, if the CDC was not done, you would not even know to look for in your crosstalk analysis. And this also plays out into reliability, which is becoming much more of an issue in a lot of these chips, right? Of course. Things like CDC usually lead to metastability. You know, metastability is not something which is functionally related every time. So what happens is when you ignore such issues, you may have a chip which functions right some of the time and does not function some of the other, other times. And what this usually means is that you spend a lot of valuable time on the tester trying to root cause the problem. And sometimes some problems do not even have a software fix. So reliability is definitely impacted very severely due to CDC issues. So how do you actually propose doing netless CDC with sign-off compatibility? Okay, so to do netless CDC effectively with sign-off compatibility, having a good CDC tool is just a part of the solution. You need a CDC tool which can do all your CDC checks like glitch, uh, convergence, integrity checks, synchronization checks. And that's pretty much standard with all the CDC tools you have in the market today. However, that is only a part of the solution when it comes to netless CDC, which is sign off compatible. What really matters is that you have to first and foremost make sure that the chip you are verifying is the same chip you are actually taking out. In complex EDA environments, you will never find that every chip having its own island of SDC and design and constraints. You will usually have one common script for all the chips. That common script with some APWARs or parameters set is going to effectively make sure your environment is first generated on the fly and the correct chip is being verified in the correct corner. So that's what that particular script, your tickle master script is doing. And that's the flow you want your CDC tool to be able to so that's the first step. Your sign-off CDC tool should understand the way constraints or how the design is read. For example, read Verilog, it should understand the same commands. It should understand the same get commands, the same uh, design query commands, which your STA flow understands in the same way. So once you have a tool which can read in the same flow, the next step comes to that. Once it reads in this flow, what does it do with it? How does it actually interpret that? For example, I'll give you a very simple example. Should a path go through a clock gating cell or not? Under what conditions does a path go through a clock gating cell? The interpretation of a CDC tool should be same as the interpretation of your STA tool. There should be no uh, disjoint behavior in which your CDC tool is behaving in a different way. As you're combining these different functions though, do you need to change the the training that you're getting or is are the people that are comfortable doing one comfortable doing the other so that's another advantage you get with the compatible ctc tool once you have a tool which is actually reading in the same setup and reading it in the same way your clock propagation your constant propagation is happening in the exact same way this means you do not have to retrain people to rewrite your CDC setup. You're reading in the same STC, you're reading in the same uh, tickle, you are interpreting the collections created by the STA engineers in the same way as the STA tool would be uh, interpreting those collections. For example, you may be creating constraints of set disabled timing based on all fan in command. And if your tool is interpreting it in the same way, that means you have a golden tool which can be run by the STA engineers with minimal training. And this also means that your entire setup, the way it's propagating clocks, the way it is propagating constants, it's completely matching your sign-off tool. And this means your STA flow, not only from a flow perspective, as in what flow it reads, but also from the flow implementation and usage perspective has become 100% sign-off compatible.
So putting this into perspective, what you're showing here is that you can get a much more reliable uh, chip that you know is going to work. It has much better coverage. From there, you can go on and add in your domain expertise and really focus in on the market that you're trying to go to, as opposed to trying to worry about the, the plumbing that's going on inside the chip, right? Of course. So the thing is, once you are able to plug in the tool into the STA flow, you can actually leave the CDC problems to the CDC tool rather than trying to hack your sign-off environment, you know, using special options or parameters which many sign-off tools give you to kind of do like a hacky way of doing CDC inside sign-off tools. You can actually start using the expert CDC tool itself, which traditionally people could not do. So they often relied on using their sign-off tool to do a basic CDC checks of clock gating checks or synchronization checks. But now that is no longer necessary. You have a tool which interprets the design the same way, reads the same scripts which the STA flow is reading and also interprets the same way, right to the point of how even the paths are getting constructed inside the tool. So does this actually speed up the time it takes to get a chip out the door or does it improve the quality of the chip in the same amount of time? So it actually does both. From the perspective of CDC checks, now you can do your CDC checks much faster. You do not have to bother on writing custom tickle scripts inside your SGA tool to do CDC. As we know, tickle is an interpreted language. And if you write very complex uh, scripts uh, to in very big uh, chips where you, have inter where you are iterating over, let's say, thousands of objects, you are going to have very slow runtime issues, memory issues, and this will eventually slow you down. And what this usually results in people want to do only the bare minimum necessary. They don't want to do everything. And that's what impacts quality. So your run times and your actual analysis times will reduce because the tool is designed for CDC. It's not some kind of hack of scripts over your ST environment. And secondly, because now you can do comprehensive CDC checking, not just the must have or the things you think are really, really important, there is much less room for error. To go along with that, you also have much tighter tolerances that you have to work within in order to get this chip working, right? So as you move down from 7 nanometers to 5 nanometers, it's going to be much tighter tolerances because your uh, gate dielectrics are thinner, your uh, wires are thinner, there's more electromagnetic uh, interference. Basically, everything has to be much, much more optimized. Of course, of course. So the thing is, in such things, CDC tools can really help you. For example, in a CDC tool, you can be very strict with what kind of synchronizers would you honor. Would you honor a synchronizer where both the source and destination are in the same object? Or would you honor a synchronizer which is of a certain depth? So CDC tools have features in them in which you can tailor your environment checking to your design flow. The more tighter your tolerance is, the more strict you can make your AFWARs inside the CDC tool and do even more pessimistic checking. So the tool is very configurable that as the technology you know, shrinks, as your tolerance of error decreases, you can make the tool more and more pessimistic. Tenver Singh, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you very much.